ಗಣಪತಿಗೆ ನಮಗ ಓಂ ನಮ ಪ್ರಣವರ್ತಾಯ ಶುದ್ಧ ಜ್ಞಾನೈಕಮೂರ್ತಯೇ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾಯ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಯೇ ನಮಗ ನಿಧಯೇ ಶರ್ವಿಧ್ಯಾಂ ಬಿಷಧೇ ಭವರೋಗಿಣ ಗುರವೇ ಶರ್ವಲೋಕಾನ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಯೇ ನಮಗ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀ ಸರಸ್ವತೀ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಾರಾಯಣ ವಂದೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ವ್ರಜ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ್ವೈಪಾಯನ ವಂದೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಪ್ರದಾಸುದ ಜನ್ಮಾತ್ಯಸೋನ್ಮಯಾತಿ ಇತರಶ್ಚ ಅರ್ಥೇಶ್ವ ಅಭಿಜ್ಞಾಸ್ವರಾಟ್ ತೇನೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಘೃತಾಯ ಆಧಿಕವೇ ಮುಹ್ಯಂದಿ ಅಸ್ಸೂರಯ ತೇಜೋ ವಾರಿ ಋತಾಂ ಯಥಾ ವಿನಿಮಯೋ ಯತ್ರ ತ್ರಿಸರ್ಘೋ ಮೃಷಾ ಧಾಮ್ನೆ ಸ್ವೇನ ಸದಾ ನಿರಸ್ತುಗಂ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪರಂ ಧೀಮಹಿ ನಾಮ ಸಂಗೀರ್ತನ ಯರ್ವಪಾಪ ಪ್ರಣಾಶನ ಪ್ರಣಮೋ ದುಃಖಸಮನ ತಂ ನಮಿ ಹರೀಂ ಪರಂ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಯ ವಿಶ್ವೋದ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಹೇದೇ ತಾಪತ್ರಯ ವಿನಾಶಾ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಯಂ ನುಮಃ ಯಂ ಪ್ರವ್ರಜಂತ ಅನುಪೇತ ಅಪೇತಕೃತ್ಯ ದ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋ ವಿರಕಾತರ ಆಜುಹಾವ ಪುತ್ರೇದಿ ತನ್ಮಯ ದಯಾದರವೋ ವಿನೇದು ತಂ ಸರ್ವೂತಕೃತ ಮುನಿಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaga Sorry, I missed the last class, so we tried to probably make it up this year, this, this week. So, Bhagavan says in Gita, Tat Diddhi Pranipatena Pariprashnir Sevaya That is, you go and attain the divine feet of a Guru for your redemption. So the Guru Kripa, Guru Bhakti has been a very constant mantra in our Sanadana Dharma. But how do we find the Guru? Who is the Guru? The Guru that teaches the worldly knowledge for me? Or the Guru that gives me ethos and uh, morality into me? Or the Guru that gives me who I am? That is an Atma Guru who opens up the spirituality so that he gives you for you to understand. So the question of how to find the Guru, where do I search for it? This process doesn't need to worry us because as we are desperately yearning for the Guru, So is the Guru. He is also desperately yearning to find the disciple of the Sishya. And this mutual search is God-given. But within us, if there is an yearning to seek a Guru, the very yearning is a blessing. It doesn't happen very easily. But when that yearning is so intense, What happens is that no matter even if you lock yourself in a room, the Guru will come through the roof. He will find you. You know, like uh, Mata Sita was desperately seeking the Paramatma to come, imprisoned in Ashwagavan. The Anjaneya goes there as a Guru with the healing words. the upayam to rescue 
So the guru comes and unravels the true nature. Solve your problems by dissolving the problems, by giving upayams to know that you transcend all these petty issues of life that you see. So therefore, the mukti is not a state of affair where you stay put somewhere gloriously watching the God all the time. That may be a good state to be in, no question about it. Mukti is the total freedom of being as you are, as you are the only one, one with the God. Now, what happened to Bhakti? Bhakti when personified as a maiden, we talked in the last session about personification is not an illustration, not, an, not a metaphor, but it is true. Anything can be personified. So Bhakti was in a dismay, distress. So she was seeking the healing touch of a guru. When that intensity was so high, the Guru comes there, Guru Narada comes there. And Narada also seeking, he, he, he looks at this wonderful woman, beautiful woman, crying in the, at Vrindavan um, on the roadside, with the two elderly gentlemen sleeping on the floor. So he goes there to find out what is the problem? How can he help you to solve this? So we, then we saw in the last session, that he understood it is bhakti. Bhakti is now suffering because nobody is caring about bhakti. Here the bhakti, we always reinforce it's a bhakti, which is nishkama bhakti. And the bhakti is abandoned. The jnana vairagyam were abandoned and therefore she was seeking help. So Narada said in the last session we saw, we started the most important healing words. Don't you worry because Krishna Charana Ambojam Smarana. Vrita Ketayase Bhale Aho Chinta Turagatham. Sri Krishna Charana Ambojam Smarana Sarvadukkam Ganishiti. Don't worry about everything. Just Smarana. So you think about Krishna Charana Ambojam. If you do that, if you pray to God, if you think of God, don't even pray. Don't ask for anything. Just think of God. Your dukkha will go. Then he asked, where do I find the God? Where is the God's feet? That is lotus. The God's feet, lotus, is a lotus of your heart. So your heart is your lotus. So when you therefore... Think about God's feet means in your heart, you always do the namam of the God. This is not just a, you know, dhyanam is not just repeating a, a, a word, a patam, Rama, Krishna. It is good. It, it, it heals. But dhyanam is, you know, like uh, as someone said, you know, if, if, if you go to God and you see, if you, sit, you go and see a God in the temple. When you look at God, after some time, what you do, you close your eyes. It becomes a voluntary thing for you, right? What's happening? Because God is making you to look at what he is looking. So when you look at the God in a, in a statue, in an in a idol, in a, in a temple, and you go, the God is looking at you. So he makes you to look at you. That's why you close your eyes. So when you sit in the east, facing the east, you look towards west. What does it mean? When I look at, when I look at you, look, look, look this side, my thoughts are focusing on inside. See? So that, that, that is what here he says when you do the Krishna Charna Ambujam Smara. That means you always think, always contemplate within yourself. And when you do that, what happened? Dukkham goes away. And give me an example. We said, another said, look at Draupati, look at Gopikas. So we saw this shloka as well. But he, Gopikas, Bhakti is the supreme Bhakti, you know. 
but you have you have um drua the the Dur magraj in his story you know that he wanted to attain the lap of his father to get the kingdom before he has got a, 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 a kamya he got a kamya bhakti as a desire to go you know narayana bhakti three when you started this uh, narayaniyam you know we saw this narayaniyam briefly his his goal was to resolve his problem his ailment he's got a problem he's got a paralysis so that's what he wanted to solve but when he was finishing this verses he says please remove me this deha bhogam this delusion remove me so the kamya bhakti moves into and is kamya bhakti at some stage thraupadi kunti they exemplified bhakti but their bhakti matured when they had sufferings thraupadi's bhakti was in the apex of it when she had problems so kunti had a very wise idea that if you need to think about god my trigger is distress and grief she said god give me grief the more i grieve more i pray for you it's a kind of a bhakti but prahlads or gopikas bhaktis are nishkama bhakti what is nishkama bhakti means nishkama bhakti means that you have no desires you don't ask for god anything you just love the god how can i do i have so many things to do so many things to achieve in life but can you not ask for things to god yes you can ask for things to god when you ask for things god has to take the measures of your karma pal he has to really look at your papa punya he have he is compassionate but he has got rules to follow therefore he gives you certain blessings certain boons to you because you intensely pray for those things but he always moderate with your karma pal therefore you still have to pray you still have to ask it's better to ask god than asking anybody else but at some stage don't put this force on god because he has to play with this karma pal and give you something deviously okay have this uh, you know bad dreams as a punishment get through but to liberate god from this burden you don't ask god anything then god gives you what not just a blessing but he gives anugraham in the way that it is voluntary you know whenever you when when you give a tips to somebody when ask for tips you know you give 5 pounds but when he doesn't ask for it he give 10 pounds right the anugraham comes more so that kind of bhakti is what and and how do i how do i give up things you know nishkama bhakti means i do i shouldn't have desires on things right how can i how can i not give up is it easy to give up no i i work hard and earn money is it easy to give up but this i cannot give up is an artificial construct that eludes on you it's called my comes to you in the jagrat state you know I, i'm not complicating the sentence but I, what i'm trying to convey to you tyagam tyagam vairagyam is culmination of vairagyam is tyagam tyagam is sacrifice giving up giving up giving up what you have how how is it possible is possible because it is our nature how do we how do we verify this do you ever give up your house your property your children your job the world and even yourself do you ever give up but i say we give up every day when you go to sleep what happens everything is gone relationship gone diseases are gone possessions gone house gone but we give voluntarily we want to go to sleep that means we want to give up everything you understand so there is there is the tendency to loosen up tendency to give up that which is not you that which is not yours forever there is the, therefore if it is swabham if it is swarupam if it is your natural tendency is quite easy to cultivate is it not it's not alien to you 
So sacrifice is not a major thing. It's a, it's a God's blessing that we have the ability to sacrifice. No, it is our nature because especially for Narajanam Durlapam, this is especially for the human beings, giving up for others is a natural tendency. So here what, 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 what um, Narada say, look at those bhakti. Then he said, Tam tu bhakti priya, dasya sadatam pranato vatika, tvaya hu dastu bhagavan yati nichek vrikeshim. Okay. Bhagavan, then he also concluded in the last class, he said, Oh bhakti, at you, his love, God's love on you, is pranato atika. Even more than his soul, he loves you. Therefore, Tvaya Agudahadu, if you call Nietzsche Grahesh Api, Bhagavan Yati, Bhagavan goes where? Nietzsche Graham. Because he loves you more, O Bhakti, if you call Bhagavan, he will go anywhere, he come anywhere. So why worry? So he, he's giving a very consolation, consoling words to Bhakti that don't worry, because God is loving you. He saw up to that. Then he is now he's going to give her a little bit more of her glory because many a times, you know, when you are really down in, in worldly in affairs, that you cannot do something. And a true mentor, a true counselor, what he will do or what he should do is not to talk about things that can be achieved outside, but to point out to you that you are not this small, finite being. You are unlimited. Your potency is very high. So that gives you the motivation. You know? So this is what Narada is doing. He says, Satyaditri yuge bodho virago mukti sadakao kalautu kevala bhakti Brahma Sayucha Karini. O Bhakti Satyadi Tri Yuke. Satya Yukam, it's called a Krita Yukam, Dwapara Yukam, Preta Yukam, all those three Yugams. In those time periods, Bodha, Viragha, Mukti Sadaka, Sadakani. So for the for the Mukti to attain the redemption, liberation, the means were. Bodham means jnanam. Jnanam and vairagyam are enough. They are the ones that are giving us redemption. So people don't need to really worship. They were doing their karma, they're doing the yajna, uh, they were having the Veda Vicharam, Mimamsyam. That's it. They don't really pray to God devotedly as the main means of it. But in Kalau, Kalau too. Kevala Bhaktir Brahma Sahaja Karni. The Kevala is here, not a visitation. I'm just, yeah. Brahma Sahaja Karni to attain the Sahajam. Sahajam is a kind of Mukti where you attain the uh, oneness with the God's place. Salokyam, Sarubyam, Sahajam. Attain that uh, manifestation state. In Kali, Kevalam, just alone, bhakti is enough. You know, we, we talked about Kali before. This is the very natural tendency for us, right? And this urge, especially as we grow older, we, our benchmarks are, you know, the, you, you, you are, your character is formed in the first 12 to 13 years of your life. The parental teaching, the conduct, uh, the ambience that you grow, builds the values in you. And there is a reference inside. So it is very difficult to change that. That's why the, the formative years are very important. The satsang is more important for the young people to bring them, cultivate them knowledge. You may not understand things, but it gives you the markers. So, but we, when, therefore, when we look at this new age, when things change, you know, the marriages happen in a different way, and man, woman, man and woman looking at each other in a different way. Uh, material things come into prominence. 
Uh, everybody seems to be self-centered. You know, we, we, we look at things because the comparative benchmarks, the values are time old. So we see, we are, we are learned orienting ourselves to see the problems, but there are good things happening. Many things are, are uh, miracles are happening, you know, in, in, in a digital world, computing comes into you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, objectification. You know, in those days, they called a bit processing for a computer, become a data processing, become information processing. Now we talk about the knowledge computing, you know, computers don't just process bits anymore, it processes knowledge. This knowledge could be an artificial knowledge, you know. For some of you who are technically savvy, I mean, there is something called a, um, a global GPT, which is an artificial intelligence system where you can type anything you want. It gives you an answer in English. How do I type this uh, formula in an Excel sheet or how do I write this poetry? It gives you answers. So things are moving. So it may be a possibility that, you know, even the, you know, the some of those emotional intelligence can be outsourced. Maybe experience can be objectified. So it is frightening sometimes, but I, I think it's, it's enthralling because it's enticing because Vedanta is coming into a very different fold into this. When you, when you outsource things that you think that is that you have to do, that it is you, that is yours. When you outsource, there is a, a disparity. There is you and that outsourced. The more you outsource, more you outsource the worldly knowledge, more you outsource the worldly process, even some of the experiences you outsource into it. Anything you objectify, you know, the, the word objectify in sometimes in English, you know, when we use it, we, we implicitly mean that it is devaluing somebody, right? Oh, you don't objectify me, Object, objectifying the person, you know. What it means is that objects are inferior to the subject. So when things are objectified, you get more time to think about your subject. So Kali is not just the darkness. Kali is the, the womb of a wonderful light to be, you no know, life that is pregnant, that is impregnant, is going to come out. So that is what Narada is giving. In Kali, therefore in Kali, what you bhakti, you alone is a medicine. Not the jnanam, not the vairagya. Because you have to look at it in, a, in the context, you know? don't just take this code and therefore, some say that, therefore you don't read Vedanta, don't, don't need Jnana Vedanta, it is not that. The Bhakti that he is mentioning here is Nishkama Bhakti. That is going to say in the next slogan. So Iti Nishchitya Chitrupaha Satru Bham Tvam Sajadjaha Paramananda Chinmurtihi Suntarim Krishna Balabha. Iti nis, nischitya. Iti, iti, what is that? What he said in the last verse, having concluded that in the Kali Yuga, Bhakti is the soul or the prime modality pathway to Mukti, having decided that. Who decided that? Bhagavan. And for Bhagavan, he gives him two. Not Visayashinam, but um, Surubh Lakshana. Chitrubhaha. Because he, he, he desires to his chit. Therefore, the Chitrubham, Bhagavan Chitrubhaha, who is also the Paramananda Chinmurti. Bhagavan having decided that Kali Bhakti is the sole rescue for the human beings. What did he do? Twam Sajad Jaha. Sajad means Sajad sa, Jaha. Jaha means you are manifested. You are produced. You, so God created you. Twam, you are created by God. After deciding this, Bhakti was created by God. So Bhakti is God's creation. Bhakti is Bhagavan. Like what? Like Sundarim. You are beautiful. Why is beautiful? The word here, what it implies is you are blemishless. What can be a blemish for bhakti? Blemish for bhakti is 
bhakti's adoration prayers and if you if you just flatter me and then at the end of the flattery said can you give me hundred dollars then the flattery is blemished right but when there is no blemish that means when there is nishkami bhakti that is sundari and therefore when you have nishkami bhakti who you are you become a krishna vallabha vallabha means uh, dear darling krishna vallabha you are darling to krishna you are very beloved of krishna because your bhakti is nishkami bhakti now there is a lot of import into this which means you can do ekadashi vardhas you can do parayanas you can do all this you know sakasna marchanas but your motive is to ask for certain physical things material things please don't get me wrong all this is good you do all the thing you will attain those things god likes you god likes everybody but you become a krishna vallabham when your bhakti becomes sundaram sundaram means unblemished but do i have to become like that i said become i, I made a wrong word that no it is your nature sat rupam bhakti your rupam is unblemished so therefore when somebody says bhakti i cannot i don't even need to qualify nishkamya bhakti kamya bhakti because sat rupam satya rupam your your natural state is the swarupa lakshanam is nishkamyam sundaram so you see how he motivates bhakti to to understand her true nature and he says having god created then what did you do you went to god okay god what should i do you you this is what one should ask this is again insight you know the children should ask the parents parents what should i become what should i do in life mata pita guru dev they may not have the worldly knowledge but they have the capacity to orient you towards the right direction so like brahma asked uh, lord narayana once he was born rahasya king karobi what do i have to do why do i have to do what i have to do so you also ask god how did you ask baddhanjalim daviya prashtim kim karomi divaikata tvam tada gyabaya krishno mat bhaktan poshyeti ekata once upon a time baktanjalim uh, baktanjali that means you have you raise your hands like this keeping both hands together you kim karomi idi what should i do now i born now you you made me what should i do now to ya prashtva when you ask like this tada at time krishna hatvam agnyapayat bhagwan krishna has given you an instruction divine instruction mat bhaktan poshayati iti you you nurture nourish protect my devotees that is your job so narada is now giving a responsibility don't don't just you know don't, don't like a you know deprived person cry you are a leader get up anki krutam tvaya tatvai prasanno buddharistata muktim dasim tado dubhyam jnana vaidagya kamya mao okay anki krutam tvaya tatvai okay anki anki krutam tvaya tatvai means tatvai having and king you know, having accepted that instruction because you accepted it what happened to the god prasanna abhut harihi tada tada harihi prasanna ha abhut because you accepted that condition god becomes very happy krishna vallabha is very happy so when god is happy what is going to do he going to give you some gift so god gave you a gift what did he give you muktim dukyam for you jnana vairagyam imav this to jnana man vairagyam cha muktim tadau dasi dasi tadau okay what god gave you was jnana man vairagyam to you as your children and this mukti 
as a dasi, as a servant maid. So Narada introduced something new. We have not seen Mukti in this company of uh, Bhakti, but Narada is revealing something that Bhakti was not aware of. So when you accepted the divine order to be a protector of Bhagavan's devotees in this world, Bhagavan pleased and gave you Jnana Vairagya as an escort, plus Mukti as a maid of Seva to serve you. Okay, this is also a lot of insight. See, when you, Sharanagadi is a very great uh, phrase, especially in, in Vaishnava tradition, this is the Mahamantra. You surrender, you surrender. But when you take up the surrender part, you have a lot of difficulty in surrendering because what is surrendering means, you know, we don't even smile at other person, right? Leave alone falling under feet. No other religion, no Abrahamic, no other religion talks about worshipping another human being, except in Sanatana Dharma. We not only worship another human being, we, we, we fall feet, flat on the floor, even to someone who is younger in age, less educated, poor, but if you see in them Sangityam, Sat Gunam, we worship them. So, but it is not easy. Surrender is not easy. And sur total surrender means giving away everything is not easy. Therefore, the Sharanagati is taken as a caption to decide our pursuit of life. It means you take a vow that I will train myself to be an able surrenderer or a benefactor. That means I need to manage my ego. I can curtail my ego. Therefore, my whole life pursuit become uh, a challenge to curb my ego. Therefore, one you take in a Sharanagadi as a motive, have to do Karma Yoga. Because in Karma Yoga is where you do have to do things without the pride, vanity, ego. In Karma Yoga is the only place where you can sacrifice the benefits. So life becomes a Karma Yoga. Therefore, who takes Sharanagadi principle become this. But is there anything Beyond that, everything loves now very nice to hear, but I have been you know, living for so many years, but my Saunagadi is just on the word, I can't do. But I enjoy Jnanam, I enjoyed reading Vedantam, I, I enjoy articulating this and that, and Upanishad, I can quote very easily Sanskrit, Hindi, English, Tamil, I can do that. What's the point? But when you are loaded with knowledge, when you are loaded with the desire to do those things, but you have inertia and you have the ego, you have the darkness in you that holding you down. As I told you, it will first trigger a desire for seeking a guru. But when you are not capturing the desire and don't follow in a search of a guru also, God cannot resist. So God will come, even though you are not doing Sharanagadi. In, in Tamil, it's a beautiful word in, uh, in used in, in, in especially in Saiva Siddhanta, it's called Thaduttat Kullal. It means one who interrupts, intervenes, and take control of my life. Interrupt, intervene, influence and take control of the life. So God comes in, gate crashes it. He doesn't care. It's like, why does he do that? He, he treats you like a child, you know? You know, we teach children when etiquette, you know, when somebody comes home, smile and say, welcome. And you come to my house and, and my, my, there's a small child in my house and she runs away after seeing you. What do you do? You don't get hurt. You go after the child because Child doesn't matter. The child is glorious. It is, it is it's pure consciousness. You don't have any formality with child. 
So God therefore takes you, you a very fine person who wants to do Sharanagati, who does good things in life, who is learning Vedantams, all kinds of you know, right things, but have the poor tenacity or have a lack of uh, commitment to total surrender, he will intervene. He will take you. You know, for the blessed one, he comes in, in the form and takes you away and life changes. Or he gives you subtle things. Your Sunday becomes an instead of a golf club and uh, going to the squash game and you come to certain classes. You meet right people. Your thinking changes. You know, small little white lie hurts you. Uh, jealous and greed just goes away. You are, the first sign is you are able to appreciate others. You know, appreciating is uh, the, a great generosity. So you've done very well. That is beautiful. That is nice. That words of price, we normally don't do it. All this is culmination will take you away. But these are all the bad things to get out. So, okay, I'm digressing, but I think important point I wanted to say. So here what he said was, he sent you Mukti as a Dasi and Bhakti and Vairagyam as your companion of it. And he says, therefore, having got those things, what do you have to do? Poshnam sayinas rupena vaikunte tam kroshacha bhuma bhakta vibhoshaya chaya rupam tvaya kutam. So, Bhakti, you know what happened after you accepted this with all this company of jnana vairagyam and mukti serving you? What did you do? Vaikunte in the vaikuntam. Svena rupena tvam poshnam karoshi. Svena rupam. Svena rupam means your svaya rupam. You, you, what is your svaya rupam? Sundari, Krishna Vallabham, Sat rupam. As a nishkamika bhakti in your, in your natural form, in your natural beauty in the Vaikuntam. Okay, Vaikuntam means you can just take a, a, this you know, a milky washing, but you can take it as the heavenly place, divine place. So you are there. What are you doing? You are portionam. You are nourishing the devotees of Parabrahman in those beautiful worlds. But in Bhuma, what do you do in Bhuma? Bhakta Vibhoshaya Tvaya Chaya Rupam Kritam. What do you do in the earth? You have not come with that your natural Swarupam. Your chaya ruba, your shadow has come here. So he's telling, you are not your original stuff, you are a shadow. See, it's also again the metaphor has got a lot of import. Shadow is when you walk, the shadow falls on many grounds. You, know, you may be walking tall, but your shadow may fall on a gutter. Like that. In this bhumi, in the earth, bhakti is. See, now the question will come in your mind. Bhakti is satrupam. How can it ever be blemished? You know, this is the perennial question. You know, it is a Vedanti question. Now, how is Maya becomes you know a, a substantiated, uh, projected on Parabrahma, which is Satrupam? How can Ajnanam become part of this Jnana? How is it possible? So, this question is similar way. How can Bhakti, which is pure, can become polluted? So, this we can take it as an example here. Now, the saying, you are a shadow. Bhakti is a shadow. It may appear to be polluted. The shadow is not polluted. It appears to be polluted. Maybe that's why you know we are not really able to get hold of bhakti, true bhakti in this world. It's always elusive as a shadow. So he's he is telling bhakti, please remember, in this world, you are like this. Muktin jnana bhairagyam cha sahakrutva gatapuvi pradatitva parasyantam Mahanandena Samsita. So what happened then? Um, you were very happy with, with your blessings, with the Mukti Jnana Vairagyam Cha. With, with the Mukti Jnana and Vairagyam, Sahakrutva, we've been having them as a company and helping you out. Puvigata, uh, you went to the earth. You, you happily went to the earth. Krita Aditva Parasyantam. Krita Krita, Krita Yukam. Here he says, 
Now, last time he said Satya Yukam, but he says same thing. He says Krita Yukam. Both the same. Kritam, Krita, Kreda, and Dhuapra Yukas. Or you can say Satya, Kreda, Dhuapra Yukas. So, Krita Aditva Parasyantam. Krita Aditva Parasyantam. I mean, from the Krita Yukam onwards until Dhuapra Yukam. You should take it Dhuapra Yukam. Because Kali has been already separated. Those three Yuga. Maha Anandena Samsida. You were very happy. So you were very happy for the first three Yugas because you are in a Swarupam. But here, Kali Yugam, you went to the Bhumi with these three companies with your Chaya Rupa. Kalav Muktihi Kshayam Prapta Pakantamaya Pakantamaya Pedita Tudhagya Gada Shikram Vaikuntam Punavevasa Kalau Muktihi Chayam. You may say Muktihi Chayam. You know, the, the wizard gums, when Chaya comes in, it should be pronounced. Kalau Muktihi Chayam. Kalau, in, in this Kali, in the Kali, oh Mukti, Muktihi. No, in the Muktihi, the, 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 the maid of the servant maid Mukti that you had. Shayam Prapta, she's gone away. See, this is why the absence of Mukti is now explained, you know. Only Bhakti and Vairagyams are were lying down on the floor with next to Bhakti. Sorry, Jnanam and Vairagyam are with Bhakti. What happened to Mukti? Mukti has gone. Why? Pakantamaya Pitita. Pakantas Pitita. Pakantamaya means. Pakantas are those who are naysayers, who are, don't believe in Vedas, who don't believe in Sanatana Dharmas, who are, uh, who are contradictory people. Their thinking, those thought, those disease inflicted, therefore, Mukti could not take it. So Mukti, therefore, went away. That means there's no Mukti in this world. Again, you know, each of these things, you can spend a lot of time discussing this. We don't have time. So here, what it what it what it means is that bhakti is a shadow. Therefore, you can't really hold on to the true bhakti very easily. Therefore, you should not think about the shadow. You should not think about she is doing bhakti this way, doing a you know million dollars to the temple, donating or doing a charity this way. I can't do it. This is looking at the chaya ruba bhakti. That is not a bhakti. Bhakti is nishkam bhakti. So therefore, there is a lesson there. Mukti is not there. That means what happened to the Jeevan Muktas Shankara talks about. Now, some school of thought take this kind of a slogans and say there can never be a Muktas, there cannot be a Jeevan Muktas. But Nada is going to solve this. So, but here you can say if Mukti is not in this world, Mukti can be only available when you die. Therefore, Videha Mukti is the only thing. Now, this creates a problem if it is Mukti which is only after my death, I can always. I can never be happy in this world, which is contradictory to, contradict to what we learned in Vedanta. But this will be resolved. But Mukti is gone. Mukti is not with you. But what he's saying, Tvat Agnya Punahayeva Shikram. So what he's saying, Tvat Agnya. If you if you order Shikram Gata who sa sa the mukti she will come from the guy Vaikuntam Punareva. Oh no, she had text. Sorry, make a part. Sagata, she had gone to Vaikuntam. Because of your instruction, you instructed her, go to Vaikuntam. This is not a good place. So here I think he is, he is putting it in a way, Bhakti is a key to unlock the approach of Mukti, the Mukti path. Mukti you will get or not get only if you have Bhakti. What Bhakti? Nishkama Bhakti. So therefore, my initial sunshine that therefore Mukti is not in this world, is qualified now, Mukti is available in this world if you have Nishkama Bhakti 
as a sadhana. Then he says, he is clarified, he explains this now a little bit more. Samruddha Thvaya B Jatraiva Muktiraya Diyadicha Putri Kritya Thvaya Maucha Bakshve Svasya Akshida. Samruddha Thvaya Api. But if you think of it, if you if you think, if you at the moment you think of it, Atrayeva, atray, atray here is the Bhumi. Muktihi ayadi yadi. Ayadi yadi. It's very nicely put. The moment you think, you instruct, you want Mukti. Mukti comes to this world, but when you instruct, she goes. Ayadi yadi means she's coming and going. So Mukti comes and Mukti goes, Mukti comes and Mukti goes, because Bhakti is calling her. You know, you, you, you're going to see a lot of stories when you, when you learn Bhagavatam. There are devotees who, who did lots of ill wills in this world, but when they die, they call Narayana or they do this worship. Then the Devadudas come and take them to heaven. So who arranged this, this ordering of this escort to come and take each of the Yamadudha is taking them to the hell and how the Vishnu Dutta is taking them to the Vaikuntam. Who made this arrangement? The transportation facilities done by the travel agent is what? Bhakti. How does the Bhakti does it? How does Bhakti do it? Because she has got instruction to the Mukti. Mukti is a Dasi. Save a key to Bhakti. So he says, you, are, you, you have such a potency. You can, you can give redemption, liberation to anybody else. Because the, what the whole world in Kali is looking for, they may be looking for the next BMW car or a you know, million dollar investment, but all this is going to take towards that freedom. That freedom is available as Mukti, but is available through your instruction. But the instruction when you give, that maid who gives book Mukti comes to the world at any time. So you are that such a, a great person. Upekshadha Kalav Mandav Pritho Jadav Sadautana Tadabi Chinta Mujya Tam Upayam Chintayamiham. Okay. Now, now he is the, this is where the Guru Tattvam comes in. So I go to the, it's, it's not that Guru is just imparting knowledge. Guru is not just imparting knowledge. Guru is actually dissolving the problems. He is finding Upayam. He is looking for things like like Anjana is giving a promise to uh, Sita, Mother Sita, you know. He, 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 in Sundarakanda, if you read, and he's giving a lot of instruction. Then he says, look, Mother, don't you worry. You know, when she's confused, deluded, like a Jivatma, what happened? God is not coming, or is he busy, or is he ignoring me, or have I done a sin, or should I commit suicide? Even the guru, you are, he, even suspect Anjana, are you, are you the real person? Are you, are you not uh, Ravana's sidekick? So this delusion is possible. But what, what did Anjana do? He listens and when he, with the name he says, no, don't worry. I am there. I will go and tell the Lord. I will take you to, take you to the Lord. You want to come on my shoulders now? I can take you now. He says, but of course, Sita says, that's not the right thing to do. That the Guru's Vasalya Bhavam, Shnega Bhavam, Karunya Bhavam comes in. But what can I do for you? How can I? You're like, you know, the, the moment you become, the Shishta Charam is what we need. Shishta Charam is how we recultivate ourselves. It's, it's, not, it's not just this ritual of doing Sandhya Mandanams and all these religious rites and the spiritual rites, that's all important. It is the attitude in life. That's what guides to get the gurus. That, that attitude is that I know very little or I know nothing. So I need 
a beacon of light to take me. I need help. You know that 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 resounding word to say that I need help means you already crossed the bridge halfway. We don't do that. It is not an etiquette. You know, you can't, men should not cry. Men should not ask for help. You know, that's kind of you have, oh, you should not. You, you should try yourself. You do all that. But with God, with gurus, with sages, with the Mahatmas, the moment you see the sight of them, you have to ask for help. That help is what um, is, 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 is uh, given to the Sishya. Here what he says, in Kalau, Jatau Sutau Tava, Tava, Jatau Sutau Tava, tava. that means for you, the, 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 the two children born for you, Upeshataha, so they are not cared by anybody. They have been completely discarded. Nobody, nobody wants to tender them. Therefore, what happened to them? They become mandal, they become vriddhav, they become very old, they become dull. So therefore, here the reason for jnana vairagya old age because they were not tended by anybody. Nobody talks about this too. Imagine now, if, if it's a Bhagavata Katha, Rama Katha, or Bhajan, Sankita Upanyasam, even Yajyam, you know, you crowd will come. But you say, look, I'm going to teach you about Atma Vidya. Half a dozen people, maybe, maximum. But that's how it is. It is not something which is accepted in the Kali Yuga very easily. Therefore, they have become that. Now he comes. Tvam Tadabi. Tadabi, so what? Tvam Chintam Munchar. Don't you, you forget about it. You don't worry about it. Why? Aham Upayam chintayami. I will think about the way. That's it. Now, thus you, now you got a guru production. When somebody comes and says, look, leave it to me. I take care of things. Then you say, I am done. Now, this is very important. You go to the doctor, right? You go to the doctor and ask for things that what your ailments. And he says, take this medicine. You just take it. You don't know what is the composition of it. You don't, you don't know all these things. If you start questioning this and if you find, go to internet, no, this, this day is very common, right? You go to the Google and find out what is it made up of. And everything got a positive and a negative. Then you think, is this doctor really capable? Is energy is really going down the hill? You know, we, we have all this kind of suspicion. Suspicion comes in, Shraddha goes away. Shraddha goes away. The, the efficacy of the medicine that you take is goes away. So, this, should, this, is, this is a Shitra star. So here he says, this is what happened. Leave it there. <coughs> now, Narada has now made a commitment. He's a guru. I will think about the way. What is the way he's going to think about? Kalina satrushat go abhi yugo nasti varanane tasmin tvam satapaishyami satapaishyami kehe kehe jane jane so what he's saying now, Kalina Sattu Saha Yuga Hai Kalina Sadrusha Yuga. So there is nothing like Kali Yuga. He, he's just exclaiming. Listen, Bhakti, there's nothing like Kali Yuga. Now you can take it in many interpretations. You can say it's very bad, dark, like Bhakti is taking. Or you can take an insight, this is full potential, full potency. So you see, it's like this. Yugaha kaha abhina asti varanane. Ananam means face. Vara ananam means beautiful face. Varanane means, oh, beautiful face. Because she's a sundari. Oh, beautiful lady. Kaha abhi nasti. Where is this? Where is? Is there anywhere like this Kali Yuga? There is no, no, nothing like Kali Yuga. So we take it positively. The Kali has got potential. Tasmim tvam. Tasmim tvam. That means the, the, that in this Kali, 
I will take you where? Gehe gehe jane jane stapaishyami. Gehe means graham, in, in graham, in every house. Gehe gehe, house after house. Jane jane, people after people. What I'm going to do? Tom stapaishyami. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to make you established. So that then he writes the Narada Bhakti Sutram and all that. So he take a pradigna that I am going to really establish. So he's giving you motivation. Don't, don't think. But you see, when he's make this statement, what he has to do, he has to account for not only establishing bhakti, but also jnanam and vairagyam. It's implied. How can the mother discard the children? Therefore, the Narada Bhakti Sutra, when you read again, you have to read with as a Vedanta, as a as a, as Upanishad giving you the jnana vairakya path with the bhakti as an envelope for it. Narada, Narada Bhakti Sutra gives you 10, 11 different ways of doing bhakti, you know. Archana, Nama Singhitana, Dasana. Archana, therefore, I do the Vishnu Sasana Archana 200 times, 2000 times. Not an iota of inquiry, vichara, matna vichara. That doesn't qualify to the level of what Narada is saying. Anyway, he made, he, he made the Pradigna. <clears throat> Anya dharmam stiras kritya puras kritya maho savan tada naham hare daso logi tvam na pravartye. So he goes in a little bit further. Anya dharmam stiras kritya. That means uh, the practices of the doctrines of alien people alien here anya means that is outside sanadana dharma you can take it as it as a blanket but even i would say even within sanadana dharma anything that is contradicting to the import of vedas atma jnanam brahma jnanam that approach is there anything that is outside of it Satraskritya. i would i would just put aside i would throw them away i would discard them away and then what I will do? Bhakti maha utsavan praskritya. Praskritya means uh, discarding. Praskritya means celebrating. So I am going to do things so that I, I am, we are able to discard things which are contradictory in, in our progress, but bring bhakti as a maha utsavan. Bhakti is celebrated everywhere. Uh, 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 reconnaissance happens. I will do that. You say it's a tall order in Kali. So to do that, what I'm going to do, Tada Aham Hare Dasaha Na. Aham Hare Dasaha Na. So if I am not, if I do it, I am the true Hari Bhakta. If I am not doing that, if I'm not establishing this, Na Pravarti. If, it is, if, I, if I don't bring you nourished in every graham, in every people's, every, every person's heart, this true bhakti, if I don't do that, I am not a Hari Dasan. You, I'm not, you know, you say sometimes, you know, if I don't do it, don't call me. I'm not, I'm not Raja anymore. I, I give me a name, you know, like that. He says, I'm giving you the work. I will make sure it happens. So he is giving such a thing there. I think it's a, Maybe it's a good time to stop. So we are going to see a couple of more slogans. Maybe we we'll increase the pace a little bit more. So he he will conclude giving that recipe for motivation for bhakti, and then he has to really do something to wake up those two children, so that they all can live happily. Now he's going to have a problem there. He's not. That's the reason why you remember the story flashback. I'm telling Narada's narration to Bhakti, but this Narada's narration to Bhakti is a narration given by Sanat Kumara to, sorry, Narada gave you Sanat Kumara, what happened before? But that Sanat Kumara's conversation is what Sudha Pauranika was giving to Savanaka. So you can see all these flashbacks. So the reason why Narada was wandering around and looking for help from Sanat Kumara is because he is going to find it difficult to implement his divine wow. Let me stop there. 
ओम असदोमा सद्गमय ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत तत्सत thank you thank you thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you